Who here is satisfied with their income? No. No? Anybody? Somebody has to be. One person? One guy. Two, three. Three people out of 400 or whatever. Oh, am I satisfied with my income? You know, believe it or not, this year I actually tried to lower my income so I'd have more free time. So some of you, I hope you get to that problem where you're like trying to make your income go down. <laughs> Seriously, that's, that was my goal at the beginning of this year. It's always easy to bring your income down too. It's much harder to bring it up. But So I would say right now I'm kind of satisfied where it is right now. You can't, let me just say this, for all you people who are super greedy, it's possible to be making too much money if it takes away from your freedom. You know what I mean? Like some people are making, there's hedge fund guys that make $100 million a year, but they haven't left their office. They're in New York. You go to New, who here lives in New York? I used to live in New York. There'd be guys that would be getting in full suits in the subway one in the morning, going home from work, and they had to be up before the stock market, so they were up at four in the morning. That's not a good life, no matter how much you make. 12 years old is the perfect age to start, by the way. Uh, a lot of people, like Warren Buffett, he started at seven. There was a guy named J.R. Simplot. He's dead now, but he was one of the first billionaires in the US. He started at like eight years old. Um, he said he had a company when he was like eight or nine with three adults working for him. He said it was very hard to tell them what to do when you're nine. You know, he had these three guys that was telling what to do, but he ended up being so rich. There's a story. He owned all this land in America, and he, and he actually grew potatoes for McDonald's. And he would f use his plane to fly over to find new land that he wanted to buy. So they were flying over a place that he saw. He was like, land here. I want this. I want to buy this ranch. They land on the ranch. He sends his two assistants. They walk one mile away. An hour later, they come back, and they go, sir, you already own this land. This dude owned so much land, he couldn't keep track. So here's the big picture formula. You can write this down. So let me, let me point that in case you can't see. You got A1 plus A2 plus A3. Then you add on top of that P, and that gives you L. All right. This way, everybody got it? So what this is, A stands for active. So you have your three active source of income. I'll explain what I mean by active. P stands for passive. And L stands for lifestyle. Okay? Now, there's something about this math formula that's different than the average math formula. Is anybody here from Israel? Hebrew? Anybody right? So we're going to go, you know how to... America, you read this way. Some countries, you read that way. We're going to go the opposite direction. So first, you got to write down lifestyle goals. Okay? What are your lifestyle goals? So you can even put the word goals under here. Lifestyle goals. L. And you got to really think those through, what those are. Because a lot of people, if I ask them, like, what's your lifestyle goals? They're like, man, I just want to be a, a mogul or something like that. That's too broad. People watch it too much TV. They're watching too much Empire or Billions or whatever show they're watching, right? Mogul, forget that. Think about, you might become a mogul, but you, most moguls didn't really set out to become moguls. They just were doing their thing, and they became that thing, right? So I like to spend 50% of the time in the city because there's a lot to do, it's fun, but I get burnt out. So I like to spend 50% of my time on a ranch, like away from a lot of people. So that's one of my big lifestyle goals, have enough income that if I need to, like Sunday I'm leaving town, I'm flying out, that the money's not the problem for the airline ticket. And I usually bring four or five people with me so I gotta have $10,000 or whatever if I go commercial. If you go private, to go to where I have a ranch in the East Coast is like $38,000 if you wanna fly one way. So you don't have to go private. That's a, sometimes I go private, sometimes I save money. But that's your lifestyle. For my lifestyle goal, if I write that down, ranch life, then I write down the number that I need per year or per month. I like to do it per month. I like to have um, 
I like to have enough money to be able to take people out to eat that don't have, like some of my friends don't make as much money. I want to be able to pay. So I define my lifestyle goal. Okay, I'm going to go out to eat four times a, a month with them. It's a thousand bucks. Okay, that's four thousand I need to have that month. You see how I'm just piecing this together? And you won't have time at today, but when you go home, you should really spend like a week thinking out your lifestyle goals. And some of your lifestyle goals, you'll find out you don't need that much money. Some of them, some of them are free. Like one of my lifestyle goals in 2012, before I started doing social media, I like to read books. But sometimes I felt guilty reading books all day because I was like, I'm not making any money. So I was like, how can I make money from books? And then I started doing book summaries, did a TEDx talk, all that stuff is when I was starting out. So books, if you like to read books, book costs you 10 bucks. So your lifestyle goal could be very low there, um, but still write it down. So you add up all your lifestyle goals, one, two, three, four, five, you might have 100. Hopefully you don't have 100, it's too many. Let's say you have 10 goals, you add them up together, that's your number. Does anybody know what their number is? This is, I ask people this, people are like, man, I want to change my life. I'm like, what's your number? No one ever knows. It's a tragedy in school, man. You should have spent a whole year mapping out your number. I actually have my lifestyle goals by the day, but it's a little more complicated, so I don't want to make it too complicated. What, what's your number? 6,000 a month, okay? How much is that a day? 200 bucks. So his number is 200 bucks a day. So how much does he need to make per hour if he had an automated business? $8 an hour. Does that sound intimidating? But you gotta make it 24 seven, that's the key. So you have to go online. Because if you have a store or you're like selling your services, you won't be able to make $8 an hour, 24, if you sleep. Definition of passive, does it make you money while you're sleeping? And I'll add one thing. If you're working on a war of one hour a month, it's active income. Who here is unemployed? One, okay, most everyone has a job. Right now, that's your A1 for a lot of people, your nine to five job. Let me just say one thing that get people confused. Don't build these all simultaneously. You cannot do it. Confucius said, the man who chases two rabbits catches zero. If there's two rabbits and you got a gun and you're trying to, and you're like, which one do I shoot? By the time you do that, they both are gone. And so if you try to build three active income at all at the same time, Odds are, you'll have nothing. Nothing will be making you money. So what I do, I build, I get one up and going, I catch the rabbit, I run it for like at least 18 months, make sure it's going, then I'll hire somebody else to run it for me, and then I'll go and start A2, and then A3. How many A's does Warren Buffett have? I looked on his Wikipedia, he has like 99. Joe's gonna be teaching you a great source of income, which is social media marketing agency. Who's in my social media marketing program? Cool, a lot of you. If you already have a job, that's a great second one to build as a part-time thing. If you don't have a job, that thing is, is people around the world are making a lot of money in this program. It's crazy the amount of testimonials I get. I was in Australia, I went with Arnold Schwarzenegger to speak at this thing that he had. In, actually, is Gore in here? He's a promoter down in Australia. He brought me to Australia. He brings Arnold Schwarzenegger there. And uh, while I was walking around the day before I gave a talk, this kid comes up to me. Two, two people, actually. I put it on my Snapchat if you follow me. One kid, I was at the gym in the hotel, and he comes up to me, and he's like, I'm 17 years old. I'm still in high school. I started a social media marketing agency. And I said, how much are you making? He's making 17000 Australian, which was like twelve grand a month U.S., that's good, while he's still in high school. And he said he's only been doing it for like six months. He actually flew out here, I don't know, last month or two months ago. I did my 300 dinner. Have you guys heard about these dinners I'm doing? These you can't pay to get in. They're just, I invite the people who get the best results. So I'm trying to t specifically track 300 people from rags to riches. That kid was invited into the 300 group because if you're 17 and you're making 12 G's a month, you're on track to do big things. What did Drake say? If you don't have haters, you're not popping. If you just start doing stuff, you start posting, that person you thought the friend would be like, oh, why you gotta show off? 
Well, you got to show off. That's the person that you kick out of the circle. People should either be giving you constructive criticism. They don't always have to approve everything. Either constructive or they should be nice. You don't need anything else in that circle. You will make the average of the five closest people to you. That's an old saying. Guess your five closest friends' income. Is the average friend making 30 to 40 and you're making 50? So you're the best one in the group. You don't want to be the best one in the bubble. You want this bubble to be full of people that intimidate you. All growth comes from being intimidated. If you're always feeling comfortable, comfort comes from being from status, right? You, you feel good around your friends, you know your status with them, you're comfortable. When you go into a group, you know, if right now Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, all these people walked into this room and said, hey, come to dinner with us, we're all gonna chat about business going to share. You, you might be like, uh-oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't have anything to contribute. Good. That's the room you want to be in. So for example, I'll tell you one simple thing. Who here would rather, instead of being able to bench 350, be happy with 300, but $300,000 in your bank account? I have a shirt that says, it's for all the meatheads in LA, less bench, more bank. See what I'm saying? Every person here should read a book a week for the next 18 months. At 52 books a year. Now, I count audio books. Set, when everybody else is listening to music, I got nothing against music, but I do have something against music if you're listening to it eight hours a day. That's, that's not a balance. I can tell you this, I know Rihanna, I know some, they're getting rich. They're happy that people listen to music eight hours a day. It makes them rich, but it make, doesn't make you rich. Does that make sense? You can't always make other people rich. You also have to focus on yourself some. In the time when your friends, like on the way to school, when you're answering emails, when you're working out in the gym, you don't have to listen to music to work out. Some people argue with me and they're like, well, you, you should not listen to audiobooks while you lift weights because you won't get as strong. Well, fine, don't be as strong. So if there's truth to that, I'm willing to take that compromise. So. What, you should go through one book every seven days. Either read it, skim it. Who here is in MentorBox? It's a company me and Alex started. We have summaries of the books. It's $7 a month. We give you all the book summaries per month that you can handle. Who here has $7? So just knowing stuff makes you go up. And if you study status and psychology, being stupid lowers you on the totem pole. I once went on a date with a girl, one of the most beautiful girls in Los Angeles. <laughs> I'll never forget, I was in Santa Monica, I was at a restaurant, and I was like, we're just talking, and I was like, yeah, I gotta go to Miami next week. And she goes, Miami, where is that? I've heard of it. And I was like, oh my God. This is American too. She's like, Miami, I've heard of that. She's like, is that Northern California? So when you do that, no matter how you look, Nobody respects somebody that's stupid. Does that make sense? You don't have to be Albert Einstein, but you can't be dumb. And most people are dumb. You read 52 books a year, I promise you, your status in other people's eyes will go up naturally without you trying it, without you forcing it. The best way to laugh, I promise you this, especially for a lot of people in a room, how you think. People shut up when you make more money than them. I'm telling you. Of all the critics I've ever had online, anybody I, in my entire four years of being pretty big on social media, never had one person in person criticize me. Even though I could tell that person might not like me because success is power and a good kind of power, it's respect. What did, what did they say in Scarface? When he was trying, the one guy kept hitting on the girls what did Al Pacino say? He said, no, this is America. First you get the money, then you get the power, then you get the women, the woman. I don't know if that's completely true, but there's a lot of truth to that. So focus on making the money. And then people just shut up, they just do. And if they don't shut up, other people shut them up for you. When I did that hater interview, or the debate, <laughs> people started chiming in the live. How much money do you make? I was like, I made $112,000 today. Here's the screenshots. They showed the other dude, how much money do you make? He's like, I'm not gonna put it online. All right, blah, you're out. 
This guy made $2,000 that day. Results talk, bullshit walks.